combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. And if you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, we got a pretty cool show for you. I talk about things in the world of nutritional health and we give my own unique rant all about it. JimmyRants.com is the website if you wanna see how it works. We start off on Instagram, so go follow me there at Livin Low Carb Man, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. And you can engage live just like all these people are right now. And if you missed the live, you can actually watch it on replay for up to 24 hours over on Instagram. But if you miss Instagram or if you don't do Instagram, it's all good. We put them on YouTube for you as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for being here. Uh, go look up Jimmy Rants as a keyword search either on YouTube or Google and you will find the show. And then finally, we have one more one more way you can partake in the show. Go to the Jimmy Rants podcast, which is on the Apple podcast. Go leave us a review there, you guys. All of these links are located at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is all about a word you hear within the keto community. And one of the great bonuses that comes from eating a low-carb, moderate-protein, high-fat, ketogenic diet is this wonderful side effect that takes place. And a lot of people, they're attracted to keto because of this side effect. The side effect that I'm referring to is hunger control, otherwise known as satiety. Okay? So people say, oh, if you eat ketogenic... You get this great satiation, you're never hungry, the cravings go away, and so you get satiety. And one of the things that I put in my book, Keto Clarity, was uh, eat carbs to your tolerance level, moderate protein to your personal threshold, and of course we explain in the book how you do that and how you determine that. And then the last element with the macronutrients, we say eat fat to satiety. So then the question people have had for me since I wrote Keto Clarity and what we're going to address here on this Jimmy Rants here today is satiety on keto. How much is too much or too little to eat? Because let's face it, there is a happy balance you have to do between those two. If you eat too, mu too much in terms of beyond your satiety signals. In other words, your body's telling you, stop eating, and yet you keep eating, you will have problems. Let's say your body uh, hasn't given you the satiety signal, uh, or you think it has, but you haven't eaten enough food. That also can be a problem. So how do you find that little happy balance between the two? And let me give you a personal example uh, from just today. I'm in day number eight of doing uh, an official experiment looking at the carnivore diet and doing it with a keto template. So I'm doing a keto carnivore right now. Day number eight. Want to know what time I ate today? I haven't eaten today. The last time I ate was last night at 6.15. So I'm in almost 23 hours that I've been fasting. Now, that's really good, by the way. Really good sign that your body is in a really good state when you can go that long without eating and have lots of energy for an Instagram Live. Um, it's natural. You can do that. That's not hard to do. But I listen intuitively to what my body is telling me. And if I'm 23 hours into a fast and I'm not yet ready to eat, it's all good. The mistake that people make, though, is they they tell themselves, well, we know that the body has to have some food, at least a little bit of food, and so therefore, we're just going to have just a little bit of food. So you end up feeding yourself 600, 700 calories. That's probably being judicious. Maybe 500 calories. And your body is like going, wait a minute, either crap or get off the pot, as we used to say uh, growing up. 
you can't have a little bit because your body will think you're being underfed. So too little calories is not good. But then you don't want to uh, just go to town either. It's better to have no food at all, which is called fasting. And I've talked about this on other Jimmy Rants. And we'll talk about it again in more Jimmy Rants. So keep, keep watching. But the story here is about satiety. I'm so satiated on my ketogenic diet. And keto and fasting combined create this great ability to be sated. And you might be like, how in the world can you go a long period of time without eating? How do you feel satisfied? And why do you feel so satisfied when you're eating keto? And it really comes down to the energy substrate, okay? So when you are eating mostly carbohydrates, sugars, starches, grains, that kind of thing, can you go long periods of time without eating? No, you sure cannot. Do you get satiety from that? No, you sure do not. Why? Because you're stoking the sugar burning. When you are a sugar burner, your body has an ability, only an ability, to store up about 2,000 calories worth of energy on your body. In other words, your body needs a certain amount of calories to basically do basic functions. And if you do anything above basic functions, you need that many more calories. That's why you see a lot of these traditional runners doing the Gatorade at every, and the, the goos and the gels and all this stuff while they're racing because they're sugar burners and they have to constantly refill that 2000 calories worth of sugar that's in the body. But when you go keto, when you start eating low carb, moderate protein, high fat, and you allow your body to get adapted to doing that, which for most people ends up being about a two to four week period. Once you get in that fat adapted state, guess how many calories of energy you have on your body, even of a lean person? It's well over 50,000, upwards of 100,000 in most people. 100,000 versus 2,000. So you tell me why you feel satiated when you eat keto or when you're fasting. It's very elementary. You're eating your stored body fat, okay? So that's why you get satiation. But then the question becomes, okay, within the context of eating keto and not fasting like I'm doing right now, in the context of eating keto, how do you figure out that satiation? I have people that'll write to me and say, well, since I've gone keto, I've had no appetite. I don't believe that, by the way, that you have no appetite. What it has been is severely uh, suppressed from what it was. You're not having that hangriness that you have to eat something now. The appetite shifts you guys so that in, instead of having that, oh my gosh, I've got to eat now or I'm going to bite your head off feeling, you now have a, eh, I could eat. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, 23 hours into a fasting period. I'm at the point where, eh, I could eat. I could either eat or not eat. It's not a big deal. I'm not panicked. And I think that's what uh, the satiety that you get from keto does for you. So does it mean you should under eat calories? Never, ever, 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 ever. Okay? Did I make that clear? Never. Because your body will respond of, okay, um, he's feeding us. So, all right, well, where, where, where's the energy? You're, you're, you're feeding us. It would be better for you not to eat anything at all. In other words, if I decide, you know what? I've been fasting since 6.15 yesterday. I'm just going to wait un until tomorrow morning to eat. It would be better for me to not eat at all than for me to go home when I'm done here, to go home this evening and have like a little small little meal. No, if I go home and eat, I'm going to eat. And we talked about this in my book, The Complete Guide to Fasting. If you're fasting, fast. But if you're feasting, feast. And I think people can't wrap their heads around it because we've been caught up in the diet mentality for most of our lives telling us, well, just back off on the eating. So we do that. And we think that's virtuous. And you don't realize you're doing more harm than good. 
when you only eat a little. So crap or get off the pot, as we like to say. <laughs> but this issue of satiety and whether you're eating too much or eating too little, you've got to find that Goldilocks, you guys. You got to figure out what that happy medium is. And don't ask me what it is for you because I have no idea. It's going to vary from person to person. It's going to vary based on your physical activity levels. It's going to vary based on how big you are, how small you are. It's going to vary based on uh, the way your metabolism works. Are you very insulin resistant, like we talked about yesterday? Or are you insulin sensitive? All of those things matter to determine how much is too much or too little when you're eating keto to get that satiety. The main thing here is to start listening to your body because your body is very sophisticated. Your body knows when you need energy. Your body knows when it needs nutrients. And, and let me get to that. One neglected thing that I don't hear talked about nearly enough within the ketogenic community uh, about satiety. Everybody talks about eat fat to satiety. Uh, fat is so satiating, satiating and it is, so don't get me wrong. But one neglected aspect of satiation that's never, ever, ever talked about are micronutrients. This is why I'm a fan of real food. That's why I'm a fan of getting grass-fed meats when you can, of getting uh, quality fats, so pastured pork, and all of these really good quality foods. That's why they matter. They matter because they give you the micronutrition, and it's through that micronutrition that your body calms down. You feel satiated through healthy fats and all the vitamins and minerals that the body needs to function properly. And so part of the equation of this satiety on keto question isn't about the volume of food that you're consuming, whether it's too much or too little. It actually comes down to the uh, micronutrition as well. So all of this stuff matters, you guys, when you're examining this whole idea of satiety on keto it is a good question to ask how much is too much, how much is too little, and to find that happy medium. You're going to have to tinker and test and figure that out, but also don't neglect all the other things, and don't neglect head hunger. Don't neglect the role that stress plays that forces you to the kitchen. H have you ever done that where you're like, uh, you're under stress, and then you end up in the kitchen standing in front of the refrigerator, and you have no idea why? Your body's telling you. I want to eat. I need comfort. And so satiety's out the window. E even if you've just eaten, satiety's out the window at that point. So that comes in as a monkey wrench into this whole thing as well. So I want to see what you guys have to say about this. Thanks for being here. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thanks for being here, you guys. It's always fun to do these Jimmy rants with you guys. Appreciate it. Wow, y'all are y'all are speechless today. Peak Yogurt said, so glad to catch you live. Thank you for being here. Uh, we Juro, does that mean once you drop all the weights uh, you wanted to lose that you start getting hungry if you're sated because of your fast horse? Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't misunderstand that, my friend. The leanest of the lean, 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 lean person still has fat stores on their body. Nobody is 0% body fat, I promise you. Nobody, even the most leanest of the lean bodybuilders that get down into the single digits, they still have body fat on their body. So no, 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 don't misunderstand that. One of these days, I'm going to do a whole rant on all these things people believe that are just plain wrong about nutrition because there's a lot of that kind of stuff. No, uh, there's plenty of stored body fat. In that leanest of the lean person, there's still over 50,000 calories worth of energy on their body. Promise you. Uh, hey, Lauren, thanks for being here. Darla Daisy, this is why in the bodybuilding world, uh, they have to eat all the time. They got to get those 250 plus grams of carbs in or else they'll be hangry unless they become fat adapted. And then they can get a much less amount of carbohydrate in, burn through the glycogen that, that that produces, and then be rocking and rolling in a fat adapted state. Uh, I probably have 10 pounds or more to lose. Does that mean I'll be getting hungrier on keto when that's going on? Why? Why would you be getting hungrier? Uh, newsflash, 
If you get hungry on keto, you did one of two things. You purposely starved yourself or you underfed yourself, okay? So no, you will not get hungry on keto. Eat enough fat, eat all those quality foods that we talked about earlier that have the micronutrition in them. Those all contribute to satiety. I'm currently doing a keto carnivore diet. I'm in hour 23 of an intermittent fast. Do I look like I'm lacking in energy? Do I look like I'm hungry? Not in the traditional sense when someone says, I'm hungry. You know, they're hangry. You don't get hangry. It's a far different feeling. And of course, that fools a lot of people because they're so used to when they're hungry, they're angry. But when on keto, you start to feel a bit of hunger, it's like, okay, I probably need to eat in the next couple of hours. No big deal. You're calm about it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, learning eating is overrated most of the time. Learning eating. I don't know what that means, Bullock, in 2018. Uh, learning eating is overrated. Learning eating. I don't know what that means. Uh, I struggle with eating too fast, says Nancy. Now, that is an issue. Uh, my brain lags behind my stomach knowing when it's satiated. I'm working on that. The best way you can work on that is between bites, set your uh, fork down. And if you have to, it's kind of weird. Stick with me here. If you have to, set a timer. Set your fork down, put a timer for one minute. Don't pick it up. Just don't pick it up for a minute. And then as soon as it dings, you can pick it up. Take another bite, set it down, set the timer for one minute. It'll work, Nancy. I want to know how that works for you. Grass-fed tastes so much better. See, peak yogurt, you know. You know it does. Sounds like I need to try your peak yogurt. Send me some. Uh, you must be reading my mind. I was just worrying uh, today that I wasn't eating enough. I'm not usually hungry. I eat one meal and one snack per day, says Barnyard Keto, or Barnyard Coffee, excuse me, um, who is keto. Yeah, I, I sense that this is something people struggle with because I see comments about out there about, well, I'm just not hungry and I've only had 450 calories today and I just don't know. I can't, I, how do I put my uh, food in my mouth? And I'm thinking, okay, I wish you hadn't just put 450 calories in your body because when you do that, then you kind of force the hand that you have to eat more. I'd rather you have zero calories than to only eat 450 calories because if you do zero calories, at least you're in a fasted state. Now, if I push this current fast I'm in, uh, currently at 23 hours, all the way to tomorrow morning, it'll be 36 to 42 hours between meals. That's far better than if I had a little four or 500 calorie meal today and, and then stoke all the hunger and hormones and all the things that that would have. You put yourself in a more detrimental role when you under eat like that than if you eat to satiety and then allow periods of fasting on the in-between. Beautiful binge eater. I was a major emotional eater and even being keto for a while, I still struggled. It took a couple of extended fasts to relearn the difference between physical hunger and emotional hunger. Thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Having done several extended fasts, upwards of 21 days at a time, you learn so much about this issue we're talking about here today. Because you think on a ketogenic diet that you feel hunger, no, you don't know what feeling hunger is like until day two of an extended fast. That, my friend, is hunger. But then something fascinating happens when you get beyond that second day and your body kind of freaks out a little bit. Once that calms down and you get through it and you're still fasting, something amazing happens in days three, four, five, and beyond. You're not hungry. You're not hungry. You're completely, dare I say it, satiated without eating food. And so it makes you think, okay, how often are we eating food, even on keto, how often are we eating food just because it's the time of the day, not because our bodies are telling us that we're actually hungry. And so there's that fine balance between, all right, when do I allow my body to tell me it's all right, it's cool, if I fast today, it's cool. If I have a meal but get adequate calories in that meal, 
That's finding the balance in your ketogenic lifestyle that I hope all of you guys can find. But yeah, doing fasting was the big part for me in, in having that epiphany moment. Mindless eating, I've done that for years. Good thing uh, I catch it now. Yes, Viva Lorena. It, it will sneak up on you if you're not uh, careful about that. Uh, how's the carnivore going? I never get cravings down. No, I'm not having any cravings. Nope. Don't need it. Fully satiated. And a lot of people, uh, when I posted some of the pictures from my carnivore, uh, experiment, Oh, all that protein. I'd be so hungry. Yeah. No, I'm still eating very high fat. So I'm not sure what all that protein means, but okay, sure. Uh, do a top 20 rant. Would love to hear that. Top 20 rant. Top, top 20 what? <laughs> top 20 on what, Peak Yogurt? Uh, I'd like to know the signs uh, or symptoms that uh, show you shouldn't do keto. Uh, Betty, we're not taking generalized questions, sweetheart. Uh, this is a show called Jimmy Rants. And so we're sticking to the topic that's pinned to the bottom down there about satiety on keto. If you have a specific question, you can write to me anytime. Send me a message through Instagram or you can email me livinglowcarbman at charter.net. Thanks. BB says, sometimes I'm hungry, but as I start eating, I find my appetite goes away and I can't eat anymore. So I don't always get the calories in. Well, BB... I think that's okay on a meal by meal basis and never, ever, 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 I mentioned ever, ever force food in. And especially these idiots that say, oh, I'm so short on my fat macros. I've got to eat a whole stick of butter now to get my fat. No, don't do that kind of crap. That is so stupid. Listen to your body, eat food, eat enough food, so that you're satiated. And here's a clue whether you ate enough food or not. If you're hungry less than six hours after your last meal, you didn't eat enough fat or food in that previous meal. That's a litmus test. You should be able to go long periods of time between eating very easily. And if you can't, then that's also another sign that you probably ate too little. Uh, oh goodness, let me enlighten you on the bodybuilding era. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happened there. Alberto, my only con uh, con concern going carnivore is that it's difficult finding 100% grass-fed beef. It will be okay on organic-only meat. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to squabble about the quality of the meat. Obviously, if you can get the best quality, that's always best. There is a brand new company uh, called Crowd Cow. I want you to check them out. I've been talking about them a little bit on my podcast lately. So uh, go listen to my podcast. But um, I, I have the guy that founded this company. Crowd Cow is the name of the company. And they're committed to finding good quality local farmers here in America to deliver you guys the best of the best quality, grass-fed, grass-finished, all the best everything um, steaks and, and even some offal. So the O F F A L, not A W F U L, um, that you can get. So check that out. Crowd cow, uh, is the name of the company. Uh, any different days. Oh, and different days means different calorie intakes, number of meals. Not every day should look the same. Kitty Caddick, thank you for that. Yeah, this, this is the neat thing about nutrition. There's a lot of people, they like to like put it in a box. For breakfast, I have this, this, this. For lunch, I have this, this, this. For dinner, I have this, this, this. New day, rinse, repeat, start all over again. And you actually will fall into a trap if you do that because you're not letting your body determine when you eat. It's why so many of us who eat keto, we end up falling into eating uh, once, maybe twice a day and not all of that frequent eating, and again, eating by the clock, we're eating to satiety. So like today, typically in a day, I'm eating somewhere around midday a meal. Well, today midday came and I wasn't hungry, not in the least. Now I've been on book deadline and I just turned in the manuscript to that book today, so that also helped take my mind off of it, but I didn't eat, and that's okay. And maybe I eat in about an hour from now, hour or two from now. 
that's cool too. I think listening to your body and letting it tell you when it's time to eat is the key in all of this discussion here about satiety on keto. My breathing is harder after three weeks. Well, Betty, breathe easier, my dear. Get you an oxygen mask or something. I don't know what that means. Uh, Grass-fed, more expensive. I mix up my meats. Yeah, grass-fed is more expensive, and I don't think you have to eat 100% uh, grass-fed all the time if you can't afford it. But if you can afford it or if you can fit it within your budget, uh, I do think it's best to try to uh, put it in as much as possible. Building trust in what your body has to say is the key. And Kitty Kattuck, that is something that people, they've never had to do before. They've never had a desire to do before. And they never knew that they needed to be listening to their body before. And one, one of the most magical things that both keto and fasting has done for me is it's made me a lot more in tune with how this body is working. Some days I want to scream at this body because it's, it's frustrating uh, being an insulin resistant person. But at the end of the day, it's telling me really good signals about how I can uh, live to be healthy. Thank you, BB. Appreciate that. I'm eating to live, not living to eat. It's a good mantra. I like that. <laughs> Keto Reality Olga says, eat with chopsticks. It'll slow you down. Yeah, <laughs> sure will. <laughs> uh, learning that eating is overrated is what uh, she meant. Oh, I'm sorry, Barb's. When I'm reading these comments, I don't always get the context if you don't speak English. So um, if you could make it complete sentences, it definitely helps me out. Uh, Living Lizen Healthy says, definitely went through trial and error with this for two years and just stop eating when I feel full. That's the way to do it. And what we put in my book, Keto Clarity, was uh, in Asian cultures, they teach their kids not to eat till they're full, but to eat to 80%. That's how they describe it. Eat to 80%. So if you eat to 80%, are you, are you stuffed? No. Are you, are you still hungry? No, it's that happy medium between stuffing yourself and then under eating. It's all subjective, of course. Nobody's looking to see is it 77.4% or is it 81.5%? No, the point is it kind of puts this thing in your head of, okay, eat to 80%. So not till I'm like gorged, but then not pining for more food when you're done either. Calamity Tam 68, I tend to overeat when my food is too delicious, but if I stick with protein and fat, it's nearly impossible for me to overeat. Uh, thank you for the uh, too delicious thing, Tam, because a lot of people that eat keto, especially new to keto, and they're so used to eating low-fat diets over the years, they may overeat bacon because it is very tasty. They may overeat a steak with some butter on top because it's so incredibly delicious. So that's a good point. That does cause people to eat more possibly because the, t the food does taste so good. It may be on some days your body needs less than usual. Is that possible? Yeah, Kitty Catic, I think so. Uh, but I also think our bodies were made to go through periods of fasting. We were, we were made to go through periods of fasting. Like I said the other day in my rant, Fasting is not something you're forcing. Fasting fasting just comes naturally because your body kind of goes through this rhythm of, all right, I don't need any food right now. And that's where I am right now. I'm over 23 hours now into a fasting period. Didn't prepare that I was going to fast today. It's just happening. And it's no big deal. And some days your body will tell you, it's okay. Don't eat. It's okay. And that's all right. People think to eat unlimited allowable foods is the key. Three cheers for keto. Uh, I do think unlimited allowable foods is the key. But again, to satiety. That's what we're talking about here today. And there is a selling point when you tell people, uh, and I know Dr. Atkins did this in his books, cut the carbs to 20 grams and, they, and then eat unlimited fat and protein. And so the mistake that people made there was they still feared fat. And so they had a lot of chicken breast. And so they had chicken breast with broccoli thinking that was Atkins. And that's not at all what he meant. When he said unlimited fat and protein, he thought people would go to the fat and it would make them satiated, but they didn't. And so they had problems. So yeah, 
This is why keto is, is so awesome because we put a fine tune on your moderating the protein and you're eating more fat. My low carb path uh, cat, hey cat, oftentimes we think we are hungry when really all we are is dehydrated. That's a good point. Or our body is seeking nutrition because we are not eating real nutrient dense foods like keto should be about. Yep, I mentioned that at the end of my rant that uh, micronutrition is a huge part of that. That's one thing we hammered in my latest book, Real Food Keto. If you haven't picked that one up yet, uh, I was on the Drew Manning show uh, today, the Fit to Fat to Fit show. Go check that out. Christine and I were on there talking about our book. Uh, in the beginning, I had to battle stress eating. Keto has such a great appetite suppression. It really does, Tam. And people don't believe you. They think they're going to be so hungry. They think they're going to miss their bread, miss their pasta. You don't miss any of that stuff. Your body's calm. Keto is the ultimate chill pill. It really is. Calms everything down. Lao Misha, for me, it's not so much eating when I'm not hungry, but it's the sweet cravings. Well, that comes when you get those sweet cravings, eat more fat. Get you a little bit of hard cheese, put some grass-fed butter right on top of that hard cheese and stick it in your mouth. You won't have the sweet cravings, my dear. It goes away. We talked about that in Keto Clarity as well. Uh, I think we actually discover that we need far less food than we realized. Though I'm eating very little, I make sure it's all nutrient-dense and high quality. And again, eating to satiety, getting enough calories, not too much, not too little, the Goldilocks level. Just right. Thanks for all the info. You're welcome. My 11-year-old is listening too. He said, I think I could go carnivore. Now, don't everybody freak out about that. No, I, I think if a kid wants to eat a carnivorous diet for a period of time just to see how it feels, sure. I don't see any reason why that, wouldn't be a, why that would be a big deal. Live and Liz and Healthy says she loves Crowd Cow. Subscribe to their grass-fed ground beef. Yep. They're supposed to send me a box full of some of their odd bits. So beef heart and liver and, and things like that. So I'm real excited to have some of that. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Joanne says my brother is raising a cow for us, grass-fed. We love uh on them and visit them. Just uh, bought the proper size refrigerator to store the large amount of beef that's coming soon. Yeah. Keto Snat says you're killing it. Well, thank you. Working on that. Kimberly Sue 74 is keto anti-inflammatory. Not doing general questions. You got to email me general questions to either Instagram or live in low carb man at charter.net. You guys that watch Jimmy Rants, you got to know we stick to the topic. Sometimes I'll do generalized uh, question Jimmy rants and nobody asks any questions. But I do a general Jimmy rants and everybody wants to ask questions. So uh, I'm happy to help you out, but you'll have to message me outside of here. Uh, I had to stop baking keto cakes and treats so I can control myself. It's really hard sometimes. Deborah, you're not alone. Uh, a lot of people, they fall into that trap that they think they need that kind of thing. Then they end up feeding into the same desire that they never feel the satiation on keto because they're never really letting their body get used to keto. Uh, with included veggies, it was easy for me going with one meal, but today I kind of need to eat again. I got to make some changes. Alberto, that's all right. Tinker and test, always. Big mistake, nothing is unlimited. Too much protein knocks me out of ketosis, makes me shaky. Of course, stall and weight loss, I learned the hard way. Because you're listening to your body, Joanne. That's awesome. Why hard cheese? Because soft cheeses aren't usually cheese. American cheese ain't cheese. Velveeta cheese ain't cheese. So hard cheeses are the best. Thank you, Kat. I wish that sense of fullness was immediate. Takes me about 30 minutes, and that's okay. Your body's actually got the fullness long before your brain tells you you are. So just go ahead and take your mind off of it, um, knowing that it's coming. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. You should read audiobooks. You have a very pleasant voice. I do all my own books in audiobook. So if you listen to my clarity books, 
Uh, I do I, I do all the reading uh, with all my books, except for the ketogenic cookbook, One Quarter Cup of Almond Flour. No, that would not work for a cookbook. But I did Keto Clarity, Moment of Clarity Quote, Dr. David Perlmutter. Yeah, go check him out. Uh, do you feel satiated on carnivore? Yeah, I'm 23 and a half hours now into a fasting period. I can't, I, I, there's no better satiation than the ability to fast for a very long time. After eating, wait 20 minutes, let your brain catch up with your stomach to determine real hunger or satiety. It works. See, Kat knows my low carb pass. She knows. I thought it meant only machego or something, but cheddar is okay. Yeah, yeah. Cheddar cheese is a hard cheese. <laughs> That's a hard cheese. So uh, put some butter on top of some cheddar and boom, done, 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 done. I got your ketogenic cookbook on audio today. No, you didn't. I, I, I didn't do the ketogenic cookbook on audiobooks. So I don't know what you got, but it wasn't the ketogenic cookbook. Uh, so I just had two avocados and some kibasa. Did I overdo it? I'm satisfied. Tonight will be a pork chop and broccoli. Uh, how, how do I know if you overdid it or not? Do you feel good? Do you feel stuffed? Don't make this harder than it needs to be. I need to do a whole Jimmy Rants because I'm starting to get people, uh, and somebody sent me a message through Instagram today. I'm starting to get people that write to me and say, oh, well, there's carbs in this and this. And, and, and it's just like minuscule carbs, but they're freaking out about it because there's, and I'm like, come on. Yeah, we're going to do another Jimmy Rants just on that. Oh, my latest book, Jen says. That's called Real Food Keto. Um, and it's not a cookbook, but uh, but I'm glad you got it. I hope you learned a lot in there. Uh, I do OMAD, which is one meal a day, 2,000 calories, says A-Rod. It took me a while to fit 2,000 calories on a plate. And I remember talking to Mark Sisson on my podcast, telling him, telling him sometimes that I would have just one meal in a day. And mine was like 17, 1,800 calories in the one meal. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like. Mark, it's all I ate all day, dude. You got to get your calories in. It's a discussion that's going to have to continue because people are still confused about this. All right, guys, that is it for this one. And the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is satiety on keto. How much is too much or too little to eat? You're going to have to figure that out. There is no equation. There is no ratio. There is no perfect, let me see what it looks like on a plate for everybody because it's not going to be the same for everybody. It's simply not, okay? So don't fall into the trap of, well, I need to just eat a little something. So a little something's better than nothing, right? No, nothing is better, okay? If the choice is between eating a little bit and that's all you have the whole day or nothing at all, eat nothing at all because that's going to do your body a whole lot better. That's it, you guys, for this Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And if you want to know how this show works, here's how it works. We start off on Instagram. I do a couple of live videos every single day. So go check it out on Instagram, Living Low Carb Man, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live just like all these awesome people did here today. Thank you guys. And if you missed the live, you can watch the replay for up to 24 hours. But if you missed the replay or if you're not an Instagram person, that's okay. We put all the past videos over on YouTube, uh, archived on YouTube. So go uh, watch them there. And then put in Jimmy Rants to find those, by the way. Or you can listen to the best of the best moments of this show. We have a Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review, you guys. It really helps out new podcasts. And all of this, you guys, is housed at JimmyRants.com. So until next time, we'll see you then.